Hello everyone and welcome to the Top 24 Superstars race. I wasn't expecting to even be doing this one, uh, but my plans changed suddenly so I could get to do it. Uh, I'm about to start our qualifying, believe it or not. So as you can see, we're all in a line getting slipstream and in a second, as you'll see, uh, my TV decides it wants to turn off. You just see the menu quickly, so I'm having to root for the controller, so I pull off to the side of the track to stop the power saving mode. It comes on. It actually happened in another race recently as well. I should make sure the controller's next to me in case that happens, or at least turn off the damn feature. Anyway, so we're just letting everybody go by, not to ruin anyone's qualifying lap. See a bit of a gap. We can just pull onto the side of the circuit here. All fair and good, and then we can continue racing after letting uh, Benito go. So, next lap. Uh, now look down on the left hand side of what happens. This is about, sums up the qualifying perfectly. It's coming into here. My wheel goes off centre. So look, the car suddenly doesn't want to turn. Look at my, my hand here. Look how much I'm having to turn to try and get around the corner. So I have to exit and I have to unplug the wheel and plug it back in. My T300 is basically on the way out and I've actually changed it now to the G29, uh, my backup wheel, which is really, really frustrating. So where did I qualify? Where did I qualify? So we did a quick run through. So Fuvaras on pole. Well played to Fuvaras. Then Twizzy. Nicely Twizzy up there. Uh, we've got Over D Lightning. Uh, Benito Raul. PCM STJ. Uh, we've got Rick. Rick was top of the times uh, for that day with a 130.2. Absolutely cracking lap. I think I was second actually on that. A uh, couple of British guys there. I got 10th. Uh, so I, had, I exited to the pits, of course, which means I actually had to do my qualifying lap on a lot more fuel than everybody else. Um, again, fuel, big issue, because now in qualifying, you can't exit to the pits and start again, even if you have a problem, like I did. Um, you've, you've got a choice. You have to cause the yellow flag, get disqualified, or have more fuel. Pretty annoying, but even so. As you can see, the remainder of the grid, Muzzle Todd there. Um, Et Q, we've seen him... Uh, quite a few times. Uh, VP Beloff, of course, the truly uh, of the brand's hatch race uh, a few weeks, uh, might even be a couple of months ago now. Um, as we get ready to race, you always have this long stall period now uh, at the start of these races, which is pretty weird. And then suddenly it just starts straight away. Uh, it's very bizarre. <clears throat> so, just to get onto something that you probably have realised or haven't realised, where have the video's been the past few days? I had a sore throat, so obviously I did that 35 minute recording on Project Cars 2. Believe it or not, during that, and you can actually sense it on one of the corners when I sort of try and clear my throat a little bit, but in a kind of a non-obvious way, um, I get a sore throat, uh, and I've had a sore throat for a few days. <coughs> We're back now, of course, you probably tell a little bit, I've still got a tiny bit, but it's not bad, uh, and we're here with a race. So, BOP test will start again tomorrow. Uh, I have to try and make sure I'm up to speed with the G29, but here in this race, I'm using the T300 still. So, that's going on in my mind, is that, is it going to break again? Because it has been breaking a lot. So, what it is, is when I'm racing 100%, like you do in qualifying, uh, like you do in the BOP test, the weird vibrations come in. A bit like when you understeer, but... Not, I'm not understeering and it gets worse and worse and worse and it goes off centre and keeps going off centre. In the race, because we're fuel saving, um, I'll get into that in a little while, um, obviously you're not driving 100%. So it, the force feedback is less, it's less going through the wheel, it survives a bit more, but I'm still worried that it will happen in the race. As you can see, it's very close at the moment. The reason there's no TV camera, by the way, um, I only just realised, is that my replay limit is full. I did wonder at the end of the race why I couldn't save it, but then I've done another couple of races and people said that you've got too many replays, you need to delete some, so yeah, I will get on to that. You just see Cuba Tom there make a mistake, so I'm looking to try to be cheeky, but he pulls in there, so that's fair enough. I'm trying to go around the outside, but it's not going to happen, and then to the inside, and we're trying to get the overrun here, so we just have enough of an overrun. Really fair play to Cuba Tom there. We see Benito Raul going very slowly, um, so we have to just back this off a little bit here because we're not sure what he's doing. <coughs> He is off the racing line, of course, so, you know, if he's taking short penalty, that's fair enough. Slow down penalty, whatever you want to call that penalty, um, but we continue on. You can see we get very close to these guys. <clears throat> that's something I kind of hope you like, is that I can get really close to people and not actually hit them. I think the only recent time I've hit somebody was very, very recently uh, in the Best of the UK series, uh, and that's just because they broke early, um, and so I had to really... Put on the put on the uh, the anchors, and I just didn't quite do it. I got a penalty for it, so you know, fair enough. 
<coughs> Even so, we are racing. We're, you know, we've, we're down in 10th position. Our number says we should finish 17th. So we're ahead of where we should be. So we're going to gain SR, which is our goal here. We want to hit that limit of 75,000. I think we're around 72 at the moment. To make sure we can make these races. Uh, up front, uh, we've got Fotheras in the lead, then Lightning, then Twizzy, top three at the moment. You just see Ab Adam Stoko there going for the inside of Dayroan, I think that is. Uh, just comes back in, goes to the line there. I just have to let off a little bit. Uh, and uh, we continue in the line. If I was a bit closer, maybe could have made that move. But even so, we continue racing. Again, everyone's ever. Oh, look how close we get there. That is so close. That is literally millimetres. I see Nisman on my radar because I use the radar because we don't have uh, a mirror. You just see Ad Adam Stoker there put his hazards on. So he's got a penalty. Just lets everyone go. But it's all with a penalty as well in the middle of the track. Uh, so again, it's all change in the positions. Uh, there's somebody on my left hand side. I've no idea who that is. Oh, it's McLaren 6. McLaren, very clean driver. Uh, as we come into the first corner and then we start to try and get into a line again ready for this uh, this next straight. Now, of course, this straight is kind of where most of the overtaking happens on Interlagos. And I'm going to do a track guide at this place. I've got a race here now. I've got a couple of races now, actually. So I can put in that information as I... Um, I've always said I like to get races to give you the information of where's the best places to overtake, uh, defend, penalty slowdowns and stuff like that. Uh, but as you can see, we're still racing along. We're going to advance the video a little bit because nothing much changes really um, other than we're still in a big group of cars. Uh, same usual people there, racing all the same. Uh, and we've uh, not got onto a fuel usage yet. We're going to have to soon. Look how close we get to this man again. See? I, I, I try and get as close as I can to these guys uh, and still try and race clean. Other guys will have pushed them there or will potentially push them in the braking zone. So when I pull out like that, I'm not necessarily always going to go for an overtaking move. It's just to make sure I don't hit them in the rear. Because sometimes if you're not racing somebody before you don't know where their braking point is, you just try and avoid that as best as possible. Coming into the right-hander, you just see up ahead, Dayroan and Cuba Tom side by side in this long right-hander. Uh, as uh, we go in. I'm just monitoring fuel at this point. So I can see that I've got 4.9 left. That puts me around the end of lap number 10. That's not where we want to be. That's a three stop strategy. We want a two stop. So I go to power two. Uh, fuel map two. And uh, we're going to start playing with fuel here. Because I realise I'm not ga getting anywhere here. It's a battle up front with these these guys. So Dave Rowan, Cuba Tom and Nisban. I could just, if I could just save fuel enough to get to the end of lap 12, because obviously then that's uh, over halfway, then we're on for a good result. We're not going to do what we did at Suzuka and uh, not be able to do any mathematics at all and get the laps completely wrong, uh, as a few of you have pointed out. <laughs> uh, but continue racing, you just see they've got a bit of a gap up ahead. That's because I was trying to calculate fuel and stuff, so you know it's, it was a bit off putting. But we continue racing all the same. If anyone wonders where my brake marker for the first corner is, I count shadows, believe it or not. Because obviously shadows won't disappear. Uh, and we've got no time change in this game either, so it's a perfect uh, thing to use for a brake marker. As you can see, uh, we're still keeping up with these guys, even though we're on fuel map 2. So we are saving fuel at this point. Uh, but we do need to save even more fuel. Um, coming through here, I always did this corner quite well. Uh, I'm not sure why I did it so well, but you can just see, again, Dayroan and Cuba Tom battling side by side. Uh, I get, I'm not trying to battle here, I'm just trying to fuel save, get slipstream, uh, and stay with these guys, because obviously double slipstream, treble slipstream um, is all good. You just see ahead as well, ahead of our pack, is the fight for the lead, I think it is. With four cars in that, for Vras Twizzy, PTM and um, oh lightning drop behind. Um, I didn't show you that, but uh, I can't remember why. I think he had a slowdown penalty. Uh, but even so, we continue racing, and uh, you can see uh, the pack is still staying close. I, I, I say I'm not trying to push too hard here. I'm just trying to survive. So I, I'm now playing with in my mind. So you saw me go to three, and then back to two. So originally I was going to go to three, and I was like, well, actually uphill to stay with these guys. I'm going to have to stay in two or even one. And then potentially I could go to three on the mid circuit because that's where I gain the most. And that's where I'm losing the most time because I keep catching them up there because they're battling so much. So that's what we're going to do. Look, we go to number three. We think, excellent. Okay, we'll do this. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about the straight coming up? Well, it doesn't matter too much because it's all about the run out of this corner, really, rather than initially getting on the straight. Yes, I will lose time, but I won't lose that much time. I've got the slipstream up ahead. I'm in range of these guys. It's all about extending uh, as much as we can this fuel. So 
we've got the whole of lap 8, the whole lap 9, the whole lap 10, the whole lap 11. We're slowly getting to that lap, four laps remaining that we needed. Um, so, you know, we keep doing what we're doing. We will survive. So, we're going to advance a bit further ahead now because obviously lap, end of lap 8 is where the pit stop's going to stop for uh, start for the three stoppers. Look top left. Who's going in? It's Twizzy. Twizzy goes into the pit. So, Twizzy's definitely on a three stop strategy. So, we go up a position. Now, the three stop is definitely not the quickest. Uh, but, of course, if you're racing at the front, you perhaps have had to put in those extra laps to try uh, and keep that position. Um, as you see now, Rick goes into the top three. And uh, our group is obviously the next battle down from the lead pack. We advance a bit further. Uh, Lightning's gone in the pits there, uh, and uh, what's going to happen here? Oh yes, I remember this. Uh, so through here we go. You can see we're getting very close again. We've on power map two here, a few map two, sorry. And I didn't actually mean to, but then I look at laps remaining, and it's two point one. So we've got enough fuel. Got enough fuel. End of lap ten. End of lap eleven. We're not going to the end of lap twelve, but you see how much fuel saving we've done. That's fine. We can make save fuel more in the second half of the race. Coming into here. You just see Nisban just losing the rear a little bit there. It goes on the dark green stuff on the right side. So we come on the inside here. You have to quickly switch to the radar very quickly to know where Nisban is. Nisban backs off. Could pulls in behind. So it's, it's a good move by Nisban to do that because otherwise we both lose time. And at the end of the day, we're going for the long stretch. As uh, we are now right behind De Roan. Again, I wasn't trying to fight that. The opportunity arose. I was close enough. I can take that opportunity um, to gain that position. As you can see, we are actually catching second and third place at the moment because they are, they are definitely fuel saving a lot. Um, and you just see this man is very, very close to me there. So to fuel map tool we go. Uh, and you see these two again fighting. I mean to be careful because they are a bit all over the place because they're battling so much. Oh, just a bit of oversteer. And that was more because this man cut me out that he went for the inside move there. I wasn't expecting it a little bit. I saw it on the radar just quickly pick up, you know, the three lines. Um, so I put my foot down. Just got a bit of oversteer. You just see Favaras is in the pit. So Favaras not gone the full duration. Um, so uh, we'll see what he has to do later on because that's a very interesting strategy to come in at the end of lap 10. He's a lot of fuel saving for the remainder of the race. Ooh, we nearly clipped a Roan there. And that was because I saw a move from this man on the inside. So I saw that last second. Again, I'm not got the radar on, got the fuel on. Please give me a rear view mirror so I can actually see these things. I'm having to use like my sixth sense here to guess. Um, you just see Dez is overtaking this man. Now Dez is a really good fuel saver. I've noticed this in a lot of races. So uh, the fact he's now up to sixth position has been worried a little bit because I'd say he's good. One race I did, he flew ahead. Um, but we advance a little bit further on now. And uh, we're all coming in the pit. So I get this uh, pit entry slightly wrong. I, did, I wasn't sure whether you have to slow down or not. So I just thought, yeah, screw it. I'll just go flying in <coughs> as we come into the pits. So end of lap 11. We've got 0.5 laps of fuel left. I know for sure that if I do the same fuel saving I did from the end of lap, was it end of lap 6 or end of lap 7? I can easily make the end. I can easily do it. So I'm actually happy at this point. Um, Dayron was the best there. He came in with uh, 14... Uh, 14 to fuel uh, this man just on zero there there's a lot of us in at this lap obviously because we've all been pushing quite hard as we leave the pits now so who's in front of us it's Cuba Tom and Dayron's in front which is expected Dayron came in with the best amount of fuel um, he's actually leaving with less though at 91 so he obviously feels he can uh, save that much which is fair enough um, I've obviously come in with uh, left with 99 I don't quite get the 199 thing but then obviously it must adjust itself here so we come out in a bit of clean air, which is kind of nice. Um, and it uh, gives us a bit of an opportunity to put some clean, relatively nice laps in just to make sure that we're keeping uh, a decent position here. You see Rick has carried on. Uh, so we advance a bit further on in the lap. You just see uh, Adam Stokoe's in. Uh, I, I think Oscar Stefan's he was in. McLaren's in. So quite a few guys in. As you see, Dez is uh, still out. So that's what I mean with Dez. He's a really good fuel saver. So shout out to that guy. As you can see, we're still doing our fuel saving strategy. Three for the inner circuit. Two for the end of the circuit. We are also short shifting. We're changing exactly on the middle of the tachometer. See Benito Raiola. there. We overtake that guy. Um, uh, this gets a bit interesting, actually. So we overtake him. Obviously using fuel map two. Um, he's obviously served some form of slowdown or some form of penalty at least. Uh, Des finally in. 
uh, end of lap 13. Really, really quality saving. So I see he's coming up, at, uh, coming at me. Obviously he's had a lot of slowdowns. I see that he's going to go for the move, so I just let him go for it. <clears throat> Uh, and he does get that done cleanly, so fair enough. And then through we go. So I'm on fuel map three here, and I'm still catching him, which is really frustrating. So I try and stay to the right side to show I am not. I've not got an intent of trying to overtake you. I'm trying to fuel save as best as I can. I really don't care at the moment about overtaking because as long as I make sure I've got enough fuel to get me to the end, I can have a race at the end. I can have a good battle at the end. And that's what we're thinking long term here. So he drives a little bit further on in the lap. Um, and then this happens, which is really bizarre. So I don't quite understand why he did the overtaking move in the first place. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, as you can see, I put my hands up. I'm like, well, why did you do that in the first place? Um, obviously, you've got some form of slowdown or fuel saving strategy. If you'd have stayed behind me, you would have saved more fuel. Bit silly, but we continue racing. Um, so I have to be cautious now. Is he going to overtake me again? I see he's not this time. So we continue racing, finally. So we're up to ninth position now. Uh, so we're sort of one position ahead of where we started, which is good. So now everything is progress and profit. We like profit. Let's see what we can do. We can see there's a big train of cars behind us though, which is quite scary. Uh, and we are still fuel saving. So we've got 8.7 liters of fuel, 15. We are on target here at the moment. So we continue racing. So we look behind us, trying to get the radar on. I can see Muscle's had, Muscle Todd's had a good run out of there. Uh, he tries to go for the inside here. Guess, uh, well, he just have tried to avoid contact actually there, looking at it. So fair play to him. Uh, so I keep that position. I gave him room on the inside, just came in there a bit too hot. Uh, and then we've got PTM STJ, who was fighting for the lead, believe it or not. So he's had a bit of misfortune somewhere in the lap. Look at that trainer cars. <laughs> oh, I did not realize how many cars were there. That's scary because one mistake and you're to the back of that train. Uh, as uh, one of the German drivers there, just getting a penalty. Um, just getting back up to speed now. As you see the train there, that is a scary train. Uh, as you see Twitty is now in for his second stop. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's going to obviously then be flying at the end of this race uh, to try and obviously go for the victory but uh, it is a slower strategy that so you really got to be on the pace and overtaking cars you see that German driver goes in the pits but talk goes in the pits as well so again I am wondering why did you go for the move in the first place earlier on um, you know it doesn't help you in the grand scheme of it and it just slows you down a little bit there so we're now up to seventh position this is going great isn't it we're making positions but through strategy this time now i hate this fuel saving thing i've said this time and time again i think it's just silly really that you fuel saving from the start but hey uh this is what they want this is what we'll do uh, you can see des now is behind me i'm not going to fight des too much because i know he's on better fuel uh, he obviously came in two laps after me so he's going to be going flat out his tires are going to be better as well uh, and with that long train behind me, I know that I can let him go if he goes for the move. Uh, and I can just try and keep up with him as best as I can. Slipstream will help me on the uh, run up the hill. So perhaps that could get me to the end of the race in a bit better uh, form. As I say, we're profit at the moment. We started 10th, up to 7th. Three position net gain. That's good stuff uh, in my mind, especially in the top 24 race. Uh, but we continue on. You can see Des is getting very close to me now. And I'm still doing the same. I'm changing in the right places. Just jump back up to fuel map two. Uh, and I'm coming into this braking zone. So I know at this point Des is going to try and overtake me at some point on this on this section. Because he can. He can put his foot down here and uh, really catch up to me. So if you look at the distance on the left hand side. Look at that. It's dropping like a stone. He's going to go for the move. I stay to the right. I want him to go for it. Please go. I don't want to lose time here at all. I'm on about... I'm all about the net gain here, not necessarily fighting for uh, seventh position. So in we go. Uh, we've got Nisman behind us as well. So we know we're about where we should be because obviously we were racing Nisman earlier on in the race. Uh, but we are going to advance a little bit further on in the race. Uh, you just see Nisman must have made a mistake in that section. Uh, let's advance a little bit further. So lap 17 and uh, we're following Dez. The yellow flag up ahead. Excellent. That's good news for us because somebody's had an off somewhere. As you see, it's over the lightning off uh, off the circuit and PCM STJ. Obviously, I've been waiting for him because there's been an incident. Fulveras in the pit as well. So we're actually gaining a hell of a lot of positions on this lap, uh, which is good for us because we're up to sixth. And we're about to go up to fifth position. Five uh, position net gain. That's all good for us. Again, I'm not trying to fight Des. I'm just trying to stay with him as best as I can. 
because uh, obviously if we can save more fuel then in the last lap of the race potentially we can make some moves fuel map one just absolutely go for a blitzing lap at the end um, rather than fuel saving now uh, rather than uh, going for it now and having to fuel save later so we've got six laps and we have exactly six laps to go so it's going brilliantly at the moment we've got the fuel we need we're happy, we're in a good position, five positions up. I see I'm just counting to make sure on my fingers uh, as we advance a bit further on in the race now. So you can see we've got a bit of a gap to Des. Des has pulled away a little bit, obviously uh, senses he can uh, gain another position from Dayron there. Dayron, remember, short fills, so he will be having issues. But we've got Fotheras behind us who did pit. So I know he's going to be on a bit of a mission here. He's got really fresh tyres. He can just absolutely blitz it. He's on fuel map one, so he's got all the power in the world. I make a little mistake into here. Watch what I do now, though. Look at the bottom of the screen. I wipe my hazards on. That's to tell him, you go for it. You go for Vras. Go for it. I'm letting you go. Uh, it means, obviously, I'm not going to try and force it through. I think he actually might have whacked his hazards on there as well. But basically, that's to give him the signal. He's got free reign. He can have that position. I will follow. Again, slipstream. Net position game. We're still four up. Uh, potentially, and this is what goes through my mind, because I know something about one of the drivers up front that potentially causes issues. So you can just see up ahead, uh, Fervoras and De Roan, they were battling each other. They would actually hit each other, to be honest with you. Uh, but coming through here, I can just see De Roan is slowing down. Now, this is a bit frustrating. So he's on the left. He then shoots to the right, which is a bit frustrating. I think, okay, you had your indicator on. That's fair enough. Uh, but that's a bit dirty in my mind. You know, if you're to the left and you've got to slow down and you dart to the right, which is the racing line, that's not very nice. But even so, look at our fuel now. Uh, oh, there's a yellow flag here. Des has had a bit of an issue somewhere, so it must have been side by side with Fuvaras. Um, so we're up to fifth place, five net gain as well. 1.7 laps of fuel remaining. Oh, we've got one lap to go. We can actually have a battle on this last lap. So let's see what we can do. We're facing Day Rowan at the moment. As uh, we continue on, he's still got his right indicator on, which is really annoying. Uh, as we continue on towards the first corner, we're looking for a move, don't quite get it done. Ascaro Ugo just staying behind there, which is fair enough. He could have maybe gone for a cheeky little move on the inside, but decided against it. Fuvaras obviously got a penalty, uh, and I think it was for the contact with Dave Roan, based on what was said after the lobby chat, after the race in the lobby chat. But we're up to fourth here, so six, a net position of six here. Uh, but coming into this first corner, Dave Roan makes a mistake in the breaking zone. And accelerating now, it makes another mistake onto the dark green stuff. Look at my uh, mouth. Basically, I say uh, a few words because I thought that was very, very cheeky what he did earlier on in the race. Uh, and he has done similar stuff like that before, I believe. As I say, when I say I knew something about one of the drivers, it was Dayron. Because uh, I know uh, he did something one time, which was very, very naughty. So I was like, yeah, he might have, they might have issues later on. And hey. It worked out for me. I'm in third. But I just get a bit of oversteer there. So Oscaro Ugo right behind me here. Uh, and he goes for a little cheeky move on the inside. So I went defensive. I then realized he's there. So I gave him just enough room. He was on the curb. Very dangerous to try, try and get that worked out. Because the curb will chuck the car into a bit of an oversteer moment. Coming into this last corner. Um, and uh, we just slowed down. Making sure we do the corner right. And then we accelerate out. So obviously now it's the run to the line with Oscaro Ugo. Is he going to get me or is he not? Are we going to get this podium? Seven positions gained so far in the race. We continue on. We go to the left. We stay defensive. It's now all about whether we're going to take this on the line. Looking behind now. He runs out of fuel. And De Roan actually nabs that position from Oscaro Ugo. Uh, fair play to Rick. Congratulations on that victory. Absolutely dominant there. Cuba Tom in second place. Fair play. And yes, made top three. Wasn't even planning to race this. Made top three. Did some fuel saving. Which, again, I absolutely hate, by the way, as you already know. Um, but even so, we had a bit of a cracking race there. A few overtakes. A lot of people making mistakes. Um, fair play to Matty, actually. I think he's like 19th or something. He's up to 8th. Uh, but that's it from the Top 24 Superstars. I hope you enjoyed that race. Uh, a video plays there if you want to watch another race. Uh, my logs there if you want to subscribe. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.